In this video, we're going to use systems of equations to solve word problems. And so, the, my method might be a little different than most books, but it, it gets you to the end. And it gives you an idea of where you're going right off the bat. So, step one skip to the end of the question. What is it asking for? These are your variables. You need to define them. And I'm not talking about just like, oh, one's x, one's y. No. X is, and then say what X is, Y is, and then say what Y is. Write it out. This helps you not only get going into the word problem, but it also gives you a very clear indication of where you're going. I always keep these in mind as I'm reading the problem, because I'm constantly looking for relationships between them. So, Phil and Tina live blah 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 blah. If Phil was traveling fat, uh, 10 miles an hour faster than Tina, how far did each of them drive? Okay, so now I already want to know how far. Well, I've got two people. So D1, I'm going to call distance that Phil drives. And I write it out. D2 is the distance Tina drives. And again, write it out. The second question said, how much were their speeds? Okay, well now I've got two more. I've got R1 is going to be Phil's speed. R2 is Tina's speed. Notice that I keep the subscripts on the same person. Okay, so we've defined our variables. Now, if we go to number two, it says read the problem. Write down all of the numbers and what they represent. Write down any relationships between the variables. For instance, something is three times more than another. Well, as we look back, they live 400 miles apart. They agree to meet for a weekend in a city between them, so they're traveling toward each other. Okay, this one means that they're traveling toward. Traveling toward one another. It's okay to write down more than the problem does, by the way. They start at the same time and meet six hours later. Phil is traveling 10 miles an hour faster. Okay, so now write down all of the numbers and what they represent. 400. It represents the total distance that both of them drive because they meet somewhere in, the set, in between. So that's D1 plus D2. Six hours. This is the time each drove. And then Phil is traveling 10 miles an hour faster than Tina. Okay, so now we have all the numbers. We have the 10. The 10 more. Yep, we got that. We've got the 400 total distance, and we've got the 6 hours later. Okay? Alright, so we can move on. If feasible, draw a picture, and be careful that it matches the problem. We're not necessarily going for artistry here, and uh, which is a good thing, since I'm not really an artist. So, I just need something to guide me through the process. So I'm going to make Phil a dot. He's going to start there at his home. I'm going to make Tina a dot. She's going to start there at her home. And then Phil is going to travel. And Tina's going to travel. And you'll notice that I drew this slightly off kilter. It's not halfway. If we reread the problem, we notice that even though they both travel a or they total, travel a total of 400 miles, Phil's going faster. Well, that simply means that Phil's going to travel a farther distance in that same amount of time. 
And so uh, I know that distance 1 is going to be greater than distance 2 because of the rate that each of them is traveling at. This, by the way, this fill traveling uh, further is going to guide me in, in a later step to where I check, I check it. Does it make sense? I know this has to happen because he's going faster. Okay, let's go ahead and put our numbers in. So step four, write down an equation or two or more. This, by the way, will only have two. That describes the problem and or picture using the values in step two. Make sure that it reads exactly like the problem. Well, there's a couple of ways we can get there. We can follow Tina or we can follow Phil. And I'm going to go ahead and write some of these relationships down. If I follow Tina, she's going to be traveling at R2 and she's going to go for a distance D2. If I look at Phil, Phil is traveling at R1, but that was R2 plus 10. And then he's traveling a distance D1, but that's simply the remaining distance that Tina doesn't, so it's 400 minus D2. When we go to put these into our system of equations, it's only going to be two equations, two unknowns. There's one equation for each person. So, what we have here then is our distance, rate, and time. Distance is equal to rate times time. A couple others that are available are rate is equal to distance over time, uh, and time is equal to distance over rate. Uh, I, I think it's going to be easier if we go distance equals rate times time. It doesn't really matter, as long as you pick one and stick with it for both. So, we know that the time is six hours. So time equals six hours. All right, let's go ahead and write it down. I'm going to call the top one P for Phil. This is going to describe Phil's. The time he takes, six hours, times the rate, and his rate is R2 plus 10. Remember, I'm going in terms of Tina here, and so I'm assuming that she's going to set the bar, and then Phil's going to do whatever's left. That is equal to the distance that he travels, which is 400 minus D2. Then we have Tina. And Tina travels for six hours. She travels at a rate of R2, and she's going to travel a distance of D2. So now, if you notice, we actually have a good substitution problem because we've already got what D2 is. So let's go ahead and see step five. Step five, solve the equation from step four. Does the answer make sense? If so, you're done. If not, I would start over completely. I've simply just found that it's easier than trying to find your mistake at this level. As you progress and, and as you uh, get more and more answers and more and more experience, start looking back. You'll probably find out it's a sign error somewhere. So let's go ahead and tackle these. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can go about solving this system. One is you can just simply use substitution. Uh, two is you can put everything into standard form, and then you can solve through elimination. Uh, there's two other options. One is that you graph, however you want to change your D2s and your R2s to Xs and Ys. And then another way is yet is to use matrices. I'm not going to use matrices because I want to show you how it looks by hand. And I think it might actually be quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, this value of D2 Wherever I see D2, I'm going to take 6R2 and I'm going to shove it in there in parentheses. So we have 6R2 is equal to, oop, uh, let's see, oop, I 
was wrong. 400 minus R2. Or 6R2. Is equal to 6R2 plus 60. And for that, what I did is I distributed this across. So now I've got one equation, one variable. I'm going to get all of my variables on one side. I always choose to make them positive. So I'm going to add 6R2 to both sides. And I'm also going to subtract 60 from both sides. I'm simply moving all the variables to one side, all the numbers to the other. When I do that, negative 6 and 6R2s cancel. 60 and negative 60 cancels, and I'm left with 340 is equal to 12R2. Well, now I can find R2. I divide by 12. Twelves cancel, and I get R2 is equal to 340 divided by 12. If I throw that to a fraction, I get 85 thirds. This is also 28 and 1 third, or 28.3 with the 3 repeating. Well, now that I've found that, I can just simply go ahead and substitute back in to my relationship up here in my picture, and I can find Phil's rate. So this is R2. R1 is equal to R2 plus 10, which is 38.3 with the 3 repeating. Or it's 38 and a third. Or <laughs> it's 30 more than that, which is 115 over 3. It depends on, on, on what they're asking for and how they want you to input it. That's why I'm giving you all three options. Now that we have the rates, we can find the distances that they travel simply because we know the time that they're traveling at this rate. And so we'll bring back our good old D is equal to RT. That's the form that it's going to take. So D1 is equal to R1 times T. If we use that, then that means that D1 D1 is equal to R1, which is 1 15 thirds. I'm going to use this as a, as a fraction because it's going to cancel out very nicely. Times the time he traveled, which is 6. The 6 and the 3 cancel, leaving a 1 underneath and a 2 out in front. And that really is 1 15 times 2, which is 230. D2. is equal to her rate, which is R2, times the amount of time she drove. And D2 then would equal 28 and a third, or 85 thirds, times 6, which would be, and those cancel out again, giving us 1 and 2. 2 times 85 is 170. All right. So, if you don't remember the original question, it says, if Phil was traveling 10 miles an hour faster than Tina, how far did each of them drive? And then what were their speeds? So, Tina's distance. I'll just put Tina. Travel 170 miles at 28.3 repeating miles per hour. Phil traveled 230 miles at 38.3 miles per hour. What's three repeating? Now, Phil drove farther. Well, isn't that what we said should happen up here? 